Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to season eight with us. We're thrilled to be wrapping up and looking forward to season nine. We wanted to give you a a little bit of a preview and some nuggets, some tidbits on things to keep in mind as you stay on your DEI journey. Well, first of all, I'd like to share an important preview of season nine. We will be interviewing leaders in the trenches focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So not unlike past seasons, however, uh, there will be a very intentional focus this season on folks that can share case studies, real life applications of things that work inside the walls of corporate America and global organizations. Uh, So we have a wonderful list of guests that will be joining us again uh, to talk about real tangible tips, tools, strategies, things that are working that are not working. So be looking forward to that for season nine. And of course, if you have any excellent guest recommendations, uh, our season roster is nearly full. Uh, but be sure to send those to julie at nextpivotpoint.com if you have other recommendations for DEI leaders inside organizations doing the tough work. And as we pivot to season nine, with our intentional focus on those diversity pivots, I wanted to share some ideas, some things that we're seeing that has worked over the 150 plus episodes that we've now recorded. And in the seven years, we've been doing DEI work uh, inside organizations. And I think we can all agree, (laughs) the last couple of years have been wild. A lot of folks have entered the diversity and inclusion conversation. And a lot of well-intentioned corporate clients of ours, as well as organizations that we follow and, and, and really look to models, is I think what we're finding is those statements, those donations, um, the empty words, the empty promises, the lack of systemic change is is very much still in the forefront of DEI work. Well, what I saw uh, that has really been different over the last, I would say, 12 to 18 months has been a much deeper commitment. And so I've been pleasantly surprised to learn a few things alongside our clients that we're working with on a daily basis. And if I had to share some of the things, I would I would really pinpoint three keys to success. First of all, this has to be intentional. I think we've used that word a lot on this podcast. That is intentional, using the word intentional. You have to be very, very clear and strategic about why DEI matters to the business, why it matters to our culture. It has to be embedded for it to work. There's not that check the box one and done. (laughs) That that never worked. Um, But it especially will feel very inauthentic to people today. It has to be genuine and intentional. Second thing I'd say is consistency. You know, we, we don't do a lot of one time training anymore. And sure, there's going to be conferences. There's going to be programs that you have inside your organization that may just be a one day thing. Those are great experiences. Uh, One of my clients does a day of understanding, uh, which is an empathy exercise and helps people walk through uh, the lived experiences of of others and and live those um, to the best of their ability. That's a great example of a one day event or program But it's the reminders, it's the consistent approach over time to go back to that empathy toolkit and remind people of that day of understanding and to thread those experiences throughout the full calendar year. Something we um, just added to our website actually is a diversity calendar. So you can easily pull that down and check out, you know, when it wins all of the you know, celebrate diversity months um, by month, by week, um, and by day. And so you can really map out your DEI programming intentionally for the whole year um, based on that calendar and it has links to resources as well um, so that you can dig in more if there's something you're unfamiliar with. Um, but lots of different cultural celebrations, religions, aspects of diversity to celebrate there. So I'd say consistency, however you want to do that, whether it's the calendar, whether it's intentional reminders, One of our clients has uh, the snackable approach to DEI. John Dart, who was on the podcast, loved his story about every meeting I have as a senior leader, 
we have at least a five minute conversation, something related to DEI. And it's not check the box on his meeting agenda. It's genuine. It's, it's fun. Um, they make it enjoyable so that people look forward to it and they rotate whose responsibility it is to facilitate that dialogue. And so I just think that really speaks to the consistency without having to do a lot of extra legwork um, to add that in, right? And that's where it starts to feel really inauthentic to people when it feels like an additive or so something that's just part of how we do work. So intentionality, consistency number three is senior leadership engagement. And this is by no means the third priority. All of these are necessary for GEI to work. But if your senior leaders aren't engaged in the work, if they're not showing up at the DEI programs, if they're not leading the conversation, they're not participating in listening sessions or doing their best to understand their role in DEI, then it will not work. And most senior leaders are white men. I don't think that's much of a surprise. 80% or so of C-suite leaders uh, fall into that category. Um, Board representation also painfully still very um, white male heavy. So we need folks in positions of power and influence that have access to privilege to help support this conversation. And what I'd strive if your organization's not there yet, I would be really curious to find out what would it take, right? What, What tools, what information What do we need to close this gap with our leadership team? And that's something really fun we're working on this year um, with some of their clients, our listening sessions with middle managers, senior executives, helping uncover like what are the perceived blocks? Why aren't we getting the participation? What tools are not there? What tools do we not even know (laughs) that we have that people aren't aware of? Um, And sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And I think that's the problem with a lot of managers and well-intentioned leaders and in our corporate roles. We want to participate, but we're not sure what to do. And if we're afraid of saying or doing the wrong thing, it's you might feel safer, especially if my performance isn't tied to DEI, just to stay out of it. So intentionality, consistency, senior leadership. Uh, the last thing I'd say is just really think about how you can embed this in your culture. You know, one of the scenarios, we get lots of scenarios handed to us um, by our clients in training and our consulting work is, hey, (laughs) we need to fill this position like yesterday, right? Who doesn't have a shortage of talent? I don't have any organization I'm working with right now that's fully staffed. And it's, you know, really easy to just hire somebody, a warm body, a lot of my clients will say, which is really problematic because if we're not doing the work to ensure the candidate pool for the position is diverse, then we risk making decisions that might, you know, continue to promote the status quo. So by really showing, I want to be intentional about diversifying the candidate pool. I want to diversify the interviewer pool. I want to make sure that we have critical mass, 30% diversity. And before filling that role, you set the tone that it's non-negotiable. And the next time you go to hire for a role, word spreads quick. And especially if you want to increase diverse talent representation, people talk, (laughs) they talk to each other, and they will know by looking at job boards and readily available information, how, how committed the organization is to DI, how welcome. And, And a question I often share with my clients is the question shouldn't be, how do we hire more diverse talent? The question should be, what are we doing to make sure they want to stay? right? It's the inclusion factor with the diversity factor that go hand in hand. So can't just work on the D without the I, they go hand in hand. And I think that's a really intentional example. You know, another example I would share is that some of the best practices from our organizations is they prioritize and communicate DEI messages, not when it's just in the news cycle, you know, or some sort of event has triggered communication. It's consistently done throughout the year. And they have a habit of bringing it up at every town hall, every C-suite meeting, um, every leadership discussion to really talk about what they're intentionally doing to support it. I think uh, vulnerability and empathy are two ally tools that we can't use enough of, especially if you have a white male CEO, really having consistent vulnerable communication about their own journey and what they're learning and maybe unlearning. Uh, along that journey. We certainly have um, some great leaders that could spark that conversation um, in prior podcast episodes as well. Thinking of Chris Dale, 
shared his personal um, and professional story of navigating that as well. Last thing, listeners, uh, to keep in mind and to stay on the ally journey is we have a Lead Like an Ally online program. Um, We developed it a few years ago. We revamped it last fall, and it is ready for 2022. And what we want our listeners to know is that if you're struggling to know how to get more folks on the journey, if you're struggling to really embed this cultural change, if it feels overwhelming and daunting to you and to others around you, There's five minutes, (laughs) five minutes every couple days, short video, short exercise, uh, a few hours of content that really takes you from building your ally plan to influencing others, to having candid conversations, to knowing your role, to facilitating inclusive meetings, managing bias, and talking about gender, race, LGBTQ, and much, much more in addition to systemic change. So if you're struggling with any of those, uh, we have a per learner rate where anyone can come on and join in our own learning management system. We can actually license the content to your organization. That 10 step program is very palatable, um, very reasonable investment to keep folks on the journey and meets people where they're at and it's self led and virtual in those five minute doses. So we're getting incredible feedback from it. Um, If you're interested, just check out leadlikeanally.com. You can actually get a free guest pass for 21 days. You could take the whole program yourself in that amount of time. So challenge to you. Uh, We believe in it. Um, We want to get as many folks on that platform to learn um, because diversity fatigue, Zoom fatigue, these are all real things, uh, myself included. Last thing I want to do is sit through another live training. (laughs) So if that's you, you know, consider the bite-sized learn at your own pace approach for you and your organization over at leadlikeanally.com. So thankful to have you on the journey. Thank you for staying committed. And thanks for listening to this bonus episode. Can't wait for season nine. Thanks for being with us.